This particular video is a follow-up to some of the other videos that I have done on kind of a novel method of putting up these stoves. There are other videos on this that show this more detail. This is going to be a practical experiment. This is as if you were actually out in the woods and you were going to try to do something in, in order to have a meal or something. So I'm going through the exact same routine that I would do if I was actually out in the, out in the woods, including any mistakes that I make. This is the little chimney that I have been showing before. This is the Edelrid Hexon stove. I chose this one of the multiple stoves that I could choose for the demonstration because I thought that this would be one of the more difficult stoves that at least in the past has been for me to try to start. Uh, this is one cc. As you can see here, this is a point here, one cc of denatured alcohol, which I'm putting into the priming pad. This is the usual startup routine for me. And then uh, I will connect this syringe, which has in it about five and a half cc's of Coleman fuel. I will now put in an additional half cc of air which will be used to move this through this little adapter that is going to be going on the uh, connector here that you see, this little thing. This normally will connect to the fuel pump that you see there. This has got coal, uh, uh, kerosene in it. This is a Coleman fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this adapter to this little thing. This is a prototype. That's why it looked a little on the crude side, but it does do the trick. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to open up the control valve. And for this particular um, this already open. For this particular uh, demonstration, unlike the last one that I had done just showing this technique. I'm going to pre-fill the line. Now, I know that this particular model takes about three and a half cc's, but I'm only going to put in about three cc's just so that I can expedite some of the startup routine. Why is it not going? Oh, now it's open, sorry. There we go. Doesn't like having all your eyes dotted. Okay, that's about two and a half. This is about three cc's. Actually, some of it's starting to come out of the orifice, so I'm gonna stop at that point. I've already got the, um, the ethanol in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and start up the ethanol. This is because it's got some fuel that's already in there that's spilled out, it's going to start uh, vaporizing very quickly. This is typical for this routine where I pre-fill the line. Now you'll notice that I don't have the fuel bottle hooked up to the uh, connector, and that's because this is going to be going through a startup routine that is, again, somewhat similar, uh, different from, well, it's gonna be a lot different from most of the other routines that you see for starting up these little stoves. This syringe that you see here is going to be used to manually inject, while the stove is running, kerosene, uh, Coleman fuel, sorry, Coleman fuel into the line, and it will cause this to now preheat. You can hear it already starting. Okay, you can start hearing it now already sizzling. So I'm gonna remove the lid here and I'm going to go ahead and take off this collar and now I'm going to just stop doing anything because I want to open up the legs because the reason why this is a real world situation is I'm going to start putting a pot of water on here that would be used for doing something useful 
with the Coleman fuel. The whole idea of this is to maximize the energy that is within the, um, the fuel. Now I'm applying really very little pressure. This is only a 5cc syringe, so it doesn't take much. It really requires very little pressure. The air bubble also acts as a kind of a uh, compressing agent. If you let your finger off, you still get some uh, movement of fuel through the line because the air is being compressed. So it serves double function of not only supplying uh, uh, an air bubble to get the fuel through this little adapter, which holds about half cc, but it also supplies a kind of a buffer. So I'm, again, just moving it, it doesn't take much force. Okay, now that's all the fuel that has gone in. I will now, as you know, notice here, the, the stove turned off. That's one of the things that can happen, obviously, if you don't have fuel going through the burner. Sometimes it will continue to kind of percolate, other times it won't. Uh, you have a good 30 seconds to make this exchange over to the uh, fuel bottle. So now I, I need to start up the stove again. And it takes about a minute now, a little less actually for the hexon stove, before the kerosene hits the burner. I have the control valve pretty much open all the way. And I have 50 pumps of air in the fuel bottle. It's a 350 milliliter bottle. And about 50 milliliters of kerosene in the bottle. Now again, some of the fuel that was used to preheat the burner has been used to preheat the water, if you want to call it that. And shortly there will be the kerosene hitting the burner. With this technique that I'm showing you, there really isn't much in terms of a transition. It just kind of automatically goes into a full burn with the kerosene. There's a slight difference in the appearance of the flame, but it's not very much. And uh, things go very well. The, the water is already beginning to start to boil. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of anticipate it boiling for my shutdown routine where I want to conserve fuel as much as possible. Uh, this takes a little practice, uh, but I can see that it's beginning to start getting close to boiling. So I'm gonna go through the routine of shutting down the stove, even though the water is not totally boiling. Uh, again, it takes about 50 seconds for the kerosene to run all the way through the line. Hopefully within that period of time, uh, this water will be boiling or certainly close to it. At the same time, the fuel runs out of the fuel line. I don't think the water is showing up on my monitor. Uh, you'll have to just kind of take my word for it. There's just a little bit of a, a sensation that it's getting close to, to boiling. It may not quite make it by the time this runs out. But at least it gives you an idea that, yes, this is a practical method. It works in the real world, and uh, it will boil water. And that's the end of the kerosene. It didn't quite get to the boiling point. I have now tossed out the uh, water that was in uh, the pot because I want to show the bottom of the pot on one of the earlier videos that I had done, the transition phase uh, produced soot on the bottom of the pot, but I thought it was a, um, a minor inconvenience that I could put up with given the fact that I was using the fuel to heat up the water. But with this newer method that I'm using, which unfortunately requires a little more Coleman fuel, uh, but not much more, there is a transition stage that basically is unremarkable and does not leave any soot on the bottom. Some of this is remarks from previous uh, tests, but, uh, but there isn't anything of any significance.